Hey everyone, it's already vlog number five. Today I'm going to be doing a bike check video. It seems every time I post a picture of my bike on Facebook or Instagram, I get a lot of interest in it. So I thought I'd let you guys know exactly what I'm running, you know, any angles, bars, how I run my brakes, what pads I'm running, what pressure in my tires, you know, you guys always ask stuff like that. So I thought I'd go pretty in depth, answer as many questions as I can on a bike and let you go let you know exactly what I run and why I run it. I guess we'd better start with the main thing first, the frame. This is the Inspired Arcade. Myself, Mark Westlake and Sean Watson all had a helping hand in uh, getting this to production, so thanks to those guys for their help. Um, basically, we thought that Inspired Bikes, their current bikes that they had, like the 4Play and the Hex and the Sky, they're absolutely brilliant bikes but they're quite mountain bikey. So, you know, we thought they didn't have a steel bike in their line and perhaps a steel bike would uh, appeal to the BMXs. Um, just someone who, you know, likes the, the skinnier tubes. You know, I quite like how the, the frame looks. Uh, they've got the gap in the head tube and I think, you know, skinny tubes just kind of look, they're kind of neat. We went a little bit uh, more extreme with the geometry on this one. We decided to go for a much steeper head angle, like very much a BMX style 74 and a half degree head angle there that's essentially you know a steeper head angle makes it better on the front wheel and one reason why we did it was we wanted a, a longer top tube so that you can run a, a shorter stem without having you know like a, quite a trousy long stem on there so it's still uh, you know even though it's a street bike and it's got a short wheelbase it's actually got quite a long reach so yeah you don't have to be a midget to ride this bike a steeper front end just kind of makes it a bit more nimble on the front and it makes it quite good for uh, you know just gaps to front it makes it easier for you know, turning for carving into stuff and yeah generally just makes the bike a, a little bit more nippy and one idea was that you know if you had a, a longer top tube and a shorter stem it would make it a bit easier for bar spins if you know a lot of guys can bar spin I can't which is annoying but if you do want to bar spin this bike would be way easier for that one other thing that we wanted on this bike was uh, a really short back end. It was about 365mm and it was the shortest, I think, of any street trials frame at the time. So it just makes it really good on the back wheel. A lot of people think that street trials bikes, you know, the pigs on the back wheel because they've got long chain stays and they're just not designed for it. Actually, this is excellent on the back wheel. I mean, why would you want a bike to be bad on the back wheel? It would be bad for manuals, it would just be bad for like upping to back wheel and just generally not as good so a short back end in my head you know is the way to go it just makes it better for street it makes it better for trials there's just not really a, a, a bad point to it really one other thing we wanted was you know a bit of clearance on the bottom bracket previously the bottom brackets have been you know relatively low maybe level with the axle or maybe just 10 mil above this is a 25 mil up and again it just makes it nimble on the back wheel it makes the bike almost unstable. You know, the idea was that you get the jet fighters out there which are designed to be super unstable and they need computers to you know, help fly the aeroplane but that also means that it can also you know, turn quicker than anything else out there. So that was the idea of this. It's better to have a bike that is super nimble and super nervous and you have to get used to it rather than having a bike that's going to hold you back. The only thing that's going to hold you back in this bike is the rider. Now, I've also got the fork that goes with the frame. Now, we went for a steel fork here. Uh, one, just because it, it fits, fits the frame. Aluminium would look uh, a bit weird with a chunky aluminium on there. And another reason was just for strength. You know, if you're doing hooks, if you're doing you know, taps up stuff on the front wheel, you're getting, your front wheel's going to be flexing forward and backwards. and just for a peace of mind for me especially because I, you know, I, I don't want my stuff to snap. Uh, just went for steel, went for ultimate strength and you know, sacrificed a bit of weight, you can get lighter but they're not that heavy at all and in my eyes they're just a fit and forget component. Don't really see the need for a tapered steel tube on a steel frame, you know, I've not snapped or bent a steel tube on these yet. All the tapered tubes going to do is add weight uh, for not really much gain. One other feature that we went for was to get a 15 mil through axle on these forks. The idea was just to make the front end as stiff as possible. Certainly on quick release hubs in the past I've had them come out doing hooks and stuff like that. So just a nice simple through axle and 
it's just an, another thing not to think about. Your wheel's in there tight, it's not going to come out. Uh, this is a prototype inspired tripod seat. You can see the gubbins in there. Now, these are kind of like the next evolution of a pivotal seat. It's just a little bit lighter and I can say, yeah, plenty strong. Uh, there's only two positions you can set it to, but you know, that's to, in my eyes, that's ideal. Nice and steep, get some style points there. I hate it when people run their seats really flat, it just looks really crap. So I think the seat looks excellent. It's small, it's light, it's tough, it's, yeah, it's perfect. And you can see how close that is to the tyre, you know, absolutely ideal, as out of the way as it can get. Up front I run the inspired arcade bars. The idea of these is kind of more BMXy, more mountain bikey, they're a little bit mellower with the actual rise of the, the grip area and it just feels really natural, it feels really nice for bunny hops, you know, it doesn't hurt my wrists like some other bars do, so they're brilliant. I've got mine uncut, I think they're about 28 inches wide and yeah they're nice and high so you don't have to use loads of spacers. They're super strong as well, I've not snapped a pair of these yet. I have absolutely full trust in these, so I think Inspire did an absolutely brilliant job in those. Now as for handlebar angle, you know, some people have their handlebars you know, quite far forward. I find that quite difficult for bunny hops and it kind of makes the bike handle a bit weird. You know, it is a personal preference thing, so if you like your bars forward and you, you know, you're finding your bunny hops are okay, then you know, stick with it. But from my experience, having the bars tilted too far forward can almost make you stall in bunny hops and feel a bit weird. Um, then again if you have your bars too far back it can put your wrists in a really weird position when you're on the back wheel. Uh, so you've got to have a bit of a compromise. I take direct BMX you know, influence and I have my handlebars at the exact same angle as my head tube and that, you know, that feels really good for bunny hops. It means you can do high hops. It also means spins are good so if you're doing high hops and you want to spin you know, high 180 hops, it's really good for that as well. Now grips, I change my grips so often, you know, it just helps the bike keep fresh and it's one of the main points of contact on the bike so I think it's really important to have a pair of grips that you like. These are Pro Palm grips, they're actually a high density foam. Now I don't like to wear gloves, you can see I probably paid a price for that. I feel wearing gloves just it feels a bit weird to me. If it's really wet I might wear gloves just to get that extra grip but I just find they move and they crease up and it's just an, another little thing to distract me. So I tend not to wear gloves and I run these grips because they stay really grippy even if they get wet so if I've got sweaty hands you know I'll still get really good grip with these. I put my grips on with clear lacquer spray paint. Uh, I find that just makes them stick really nicely and you can still get them off if you put a spoke in there and use some like disc brake cleaner or something. Now the stem, again highly personal thing. I run an 80 by 40 which is a little bit steeper than what some people run. Um, it ends up pretty much the same as a 70 by 35 uh, reach wise. Uh, I just find it means I've got a higher front end and fewer spaces. So I'm running I think 7 mil spaces there. So I just find that's a really good height combined with these bars. I'll give them a measure and I'll stick up a little thing here saying how high my bars are off the floor. Headset wise, I was going to go for a silver theme on this bike and I've got the Hope headset which is absolutely brilliant. I've not had a single problem with it. It just does what it says on the tin. It makes my bars rotate, it doesn't wobble, it's coped well in the rain, there's not been any creaks. So yeah, just a good headset. For brakes, I'm on the Maguras. This is actually an MT7 lever, but I'm using the MT6 calipers. Now I've chose these just because I'm a bit of a basher and I tend to bend my rotors because I hit them. But these ones actually got way more pad clearance in there, so even if you get a slightly bent rotor, they don't rub, and it just makes your bike roll faster and yeah, and quieter as well. I'm running the Magura performance pads on the front and I've got some uh, sintered pads on the back. Now the Magura pads are absolutely fine and quite good for stoppies, you know they've got a bit more modulation whereas the sintered pads are just great for all-out power. When you're maxing out your heights uh, up to back wheel you kind of you want the most powerful brakes you can get so these ones are absolutely brilliant power-wise they're incredible 
Uh, I've got 200 mil rotors on here just to have extra power. These things are basically like vices. So the MT6 brakes are well up there with some of the most powerful brakes I've used and they're proving to be super strong calipers as well. Highly recommended. I'm actually using Hope adapters. I find that they've been the strongest that I've used. So just a bit of reassurance, I just like to have the strongest brake components I can. I've actually gone for titanium bolts pretty much throughout the whole bike. So I've got titanium on my stem and up here as well you can see these ones uh, are way too long. I overestimated the length I needed and I don't have a workshop so I can't cut those down which is annoying. And I've got a titanium bolt under my seat and a titanium bolt on my rear hub. I've got titanium rotor bolts so yeah pretty much tie bolts throughout. Cranks. I am currently using some race face turbine cranks. These are the non-cinch versions, so uh, they've got the steel axle in there. Uh, just super strong, you know. They're super stiff. When I'm doing 10, 11 foot drops, I really don't want my cranks to be snapping. I was on Shimano SLX, which were pretty good to answer you. They're super lightweight, but I did find I was bending those. Whereas these ones, yeah, not a single issue so far. Length is 170 mil. I tend to go a little bit shorter. It just means that, you know, shorter cranks, they're gonna be a bit stronger because there's less leverage. They're a little bit lighter because there's less material. And if your pedals are close, well, if your feet are closer together, in theory, it's better to balance, but whether or not it's actually true, I don't know. Now, here's my bash guard that I attempted to make. This is actually a thermo moldable plastic. So you buy little pellets and you heat it up in hot water. They turn clear, you can mold them into shape and yeah, I basically molded them around my crank, took an angle grinder to them just to smooth it off, uh, just to get it as minimal as possible. I find that when I'm doing hooks, if I'm turning to the left, that if I have a bigger bash guard on there, then sometimes that can hit on the wall. So that's why I've gone for as small as possible. Although this one, the plastics ended up just being too soft, so it doesn't actually protect all that well. I need to try and make something else, I think. I'm running a 22 tooth uh, chainring on the front. I don't know what brand it is, but it is aluminium and I've got titanium bolts holding it on. And yep, yeah, that seems pretty good. Chain wise, I am on a Trartec or KMC 610 chain. Now these things are just brilliant. I pretty much won't use anything else. They are not the fattest chain in the world, but a fat chain doesn't always mean strong. As long as it's got good quality like side plates, then width doesn't actually make any difference to the strength. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much just a fit and forget chain. And um, yeah, highly recommended. And making the, the crank spin, I have a Hope external bottom bracket on the go there. Again, silver to try and fit in with my theme. Now this is quite a cool new thing. Inspired brand new 2016 pedal. I literally just got these in a post yesterday and they're looking pretty good. They've got a nice concave on the go. The pins are pretty long and there's more of them. I've just been out for a ride and they are grippy as anything. They're awesome. And yeah, if they're anything like previous Inspired pedals, they'll prove to be strong and pretty light. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting more time out on these. Now my front wheel, start in the middle. I'm on a Hope Pro 2. Now I haven't got a Pro 4 yet, although hopefully I'll get one soon. Although to be honest with you, absolutely no issues with this front hub at all. It's been absolutely faultless and I'd highly recommend it. This is the 15 mil through axle version. You know, they're just good quality hubs. They're not gonna break on you. The bearings last, uh, yeah, fit and forget component again. I'm using Sapin double butted spokes. I quite like double butted spokes. They help save a little bit of weight and they're actually pretty strong as well because the um, stress gets uh, dissipated along the length. So I always use Sapin. DT are pretty good as well, but you know, I've just always used Sapin. Never had any problems. I don't think I've ever snapped a spoke. So again, recommended. I am on the Spank Race 33 rims. I've used Spank for years now and they're just the best rims I've ever had. They have the best strength to weight ratio that I've ever used. They're so, so light and I've never broken one. So that's pretty good going considering I'm doing like 10 foot drops all the time. These are 33 mil wide. It's pretty decent width. I'd say between 30 and 35 mil is ideal for street trials. 
That's fine. Any wider than that and the tyre becomes a bit of a, an odd shape. Makes it a bit more difficult for carving in turns. So this keeps a good profile of the tyre. It's a little bit wider so it doesn't um, fold quite as much. And yeah, they're just super light and super strong. And of course I'm on the Continental tyres. These are by far the best 24 inch tyres you can get. They're not the softest compound in the world, but they do roll fast and they're still grippy as anything. I run about 45 PSI, which is a fairly decent compromise. Any, uh, any harder than that and it becomes like really harsh riding. It gets really hard to do high hops. Any softer than that, your tire's gonna be folding and you're gonna get punches. So I find 45 PSI seems to be about the sweet spot for me. Uh, despite the grip on these things, the compound actually lasts probably twice as long as like any other tire I've ever used so even if these tires are a little bit expensive they'll probably last twice as long as cheaper ones so it actually works out about the same. Tubes wise front and rear I am running just bog standard tubes no downhill ones and sometimes I use 26 inch tubes if I can't find a 24 and yeah it doesn't really matter too much I don't get too many punches but you know they do happen occasionally. I did try tubeless on a old bike of mine and I just find that even with harder tyres, you know, you're going to be rimming out occasionally and they just burp air, so it doesn't quite work with trials, unfortunately. The rear wheel is, again, I hope this is Pro 2. Haven't got myself a, a Pro 4 just yet, uh, but I will be getting one ASAP. I'm running a 16 tooth on the rear, so 22-16. A couple of years back I was running 22-15 and you know that's pretty good gear for getting speed it's pretty good for if you're landing stuff faking rolling backwards you, it doesn't quite kick the pedals up as quick uh, but i did find that 2216 was a little bit better for doing gaps or if you're doing side ops it's a bit better to get the, the really snappy acceleration you need for that i've got a chartec carbon um, single speed kit just keeping the weight down a little bit spokes same as the front sapping double butted uh, rims again same Spank race 33 and same with the tyre again 45 psi and Standard tubes in there. Of course. I run the front brake through the forks and I've got just enough back brake hose to do two rotations in either direction Now nah, that's no real reason. I'm never gonna do double foot jam whips or double bar spins, but I quite like it just for reassurance, you know in the event of a crash I know my bars can go around twice it just means it's less likely to rip out so there you go guys that is my inspired arcade I hope you found that interesting I know I've almost definitely forgotten some uh, information on that so if you feel I've missed anything or if you want to know anything else uh, feel free to ask me a question I'm happy to answer anything about it thanks again for watching my videos and thanks for everyone who's been watching I know I've had people from Russia from India from America Canada literally all over the world so thanks a lot for tuning in and thanks for your comments and let me know you're watching um, if you're new to this uh, please subscribe you know the more subscribers I get the more I'm gonna make these videos and so far I'm enjoying it it's becoming hard work thinking of ideas so if you have any ideas you'd like to see in a vlog you know just tell me and I can't promise I'll do them all but I'd love to see what you guys would want me to come up with so it just helped me come up with ideas as well so yeah until next week, see you later guys.